Hey guys, what's up? Steven here, Metatronic Mods. I'm a little bit under the weather today, but in keeping with my one day turnaround on snare drum modifications for the Volca Beats, I've got some Volca Beats to mod tonight. And uh, this one was kind of interesting. The guy said that uh, he bought it used and was complaining about the horrible snare drum sound and so sent it off to have me mod it. I didn't realize exactly how horrible he was talking about though. Um, obviously somebody's already tried to work on this thing. You can see the um, evidence of a soldering iron mishap right there. Um, I'll just go ahead and I put batteries in it and started playing with this thing. I'll just let you hear what's going on. So that's the snare drum, and there's absolutely no white noise signal on it at all, just the uh, tuned sine wave, so whole, you know, portion of the signal's been cut out somehow. So I'm guessing, you know, somebody tried to do the snare drum modification and it didn't work out so well. So I figured this might make for an interesting video. Uh, it's not uncommon for me to get Volcas that have already been worked on and uh, maybe botched a little bit. <clears throat> and it's usually not a big deal to fix. Um, you know, usually just something like a solder bridge or um, maybe a part that got wicked away, a little surface mount part that got wicked away when they were trying to clean up after putting down too much solder or something. Um, so, uh, you know, the only time there's really a, a problem is when there's been damage to the pads themselves, the board itself, and the pads have been lifted up. Um, but even then, it's, you know, usually not too bad to lay down some new copper or just run some uh, jumper wires around the board. Although that can be a little bit more um, time consuming than just cleaning up some solder blobs. <laughs> So I usually don't charge anything if it's something simple like a solder bridge or a part, you know, a little resistor that got wiped away or something. Um, but I do like for customers to tell me when uh, they have attempted the modification and it's gone wrong. Um, you know, I like knowing what I'm getting ahead of time and uh, it just kind of takes the. Uh, stress off of me with you know getting something and maybe there's no visible signs of damage but it's not working right and then I gotta worry about well was it damaged in shipping was it already like this is, is the customer gonna blame me for the damage so you know honesty usually works out in everyone's favor alright let's turn this over and see what we got oh. Still got the knobs on it. Ooh, okay. There's the problem. Let's get a shot of that. That's pretty how you doing right there. Yeah. Bigger the gob, the better the job, right? Jeez. I mean, you know there's a certain order things have to go together in electronics to work. You can't just throw a bunch of parts and a ball of solder and expect results. Maybe you can, I don't know. Let's get this cleaned up. Alright, I'm just gonna get this cleaned off and then show you what happened. Alright, so I've got it cleaned up and took a look under the microscope. It's actually not as bad as I thought. Um, 
there's it looked like with the flux residue on the board um, looked like there was some uh, pads that got ripped up but let's see here try and get this in the light um, only problem here is this R116 that goes right there got ripped up I think that's a 68 ohm resistor and the uh, resistor right here got tweaked off to the side a little bit but seems like it's still making contact and everything else looks fine so um, you know hopefully I just get those two parts in the C78 capacitor and that 68 ohm resistor and should be working just fine fingers crossed anyways alright well that's this woke uh, fixed hopefully probably uh, got the let me focus here. Got the resistor back in place right where was it? Right there. Um, yep. Yeah. And added the uh, one microfarad polyester capacitor, which the customer requested. Uh, that provides a little bit longer decay than the 0.1 microfarad um, ceramic. And you know, some people prefer it, it's just a matter of choice. Uh, I know some of you are probably wondering if you've got surface mount parts why are you putting that big honking capacitor on the board and the reason is because of all the surface mount capacitors that I've tested out none of them really sound much better than the stock snare so my theory is that the uh, the series inductance uh, offered by the larger capacitor and the longer leads coming off the boards um, acts to you know has has an effect on the sound as well. Maybe uh, you know, creates uh, some more prominent resonances or something. I'm not quite sure, but I've I've tried a number of different surface mount capacitors and never gotten as good a results as with the through holes. So go figure. I sometimes wonder if maybe that's why it got left off of the board to begin with. They uh, they had the spot for the capacitor and then they tried a few different things and none of them sounded much better than just leaving the capacitor off and so that's what they did. I'm not sure. Alright, I got it back together so moment of truth time. Let's see how I did. Ugh, fuck. Okay, so that actually gave me a much harder time than I thought. Um, my first instinct was that the uh, buffer transistor for the uh, noise portion of the snare was messed up, and that wasn't the case. The, um, the noise source on the MCU was fine, so then and I, uh, I was looking at the trigger sources themselves, and uh, because the snare trigger comes in and then it splits off into two paths one that triggers the tuned sine wave and one that triggers the noise section and both of those looked alright right up until the uh, the buffer stage for the noise so I kept thinking that it was something to do with that transistor but swapped in a new one no improvement poked around for a little bit longer and Eventually what I figured out was that this resistor right here under my tweezers that's R119 and that um, goes between the snare trigger and the um, the buffer for the noise source and that had had a, a big blob of solder covering it initially and so what happened was the resistor just cooked itself um, or got cooked and it was a uh, open circuit right there so I got a new resistor in and um, I'll let you hear it now so there we go that same crappy Volca snare sound back so now that it's fixed, I'll go ahead and add in the capacitor and 
we'll be, we'll be done. So there you have it, another happy snappy Volca Beats on its way back to its owner now. Got that nice long snappy decay thanks to that one microfarad polyester cap. Uh, for anyone out there who is interested in having their Volca Beats snare drum modified, I'll have a link below for the service. And for anyone who has tried, who has attempted the mod before, and maybe it didn't go so well, uh, you know there's nothing to fret about. It's most of the time not a big deal, and I can usually fix the problem at no additional cost. Um, and for those of you considering the mod, you know, just be be aware that it is some really small, small parts in there and it's really easy to short two leads together or even to to melt a part off the board and wipe it away completely and you know you might never even know know that it happened if you didn't know what you were looking for so you know if you aren't experienced with surface mount soldering I'd say you know definitely look elsewhere find somebody who you know really knows what they're doing to help you with it or contact Medtronic Mods and let us help you. Alright, thanks for watching. Bye.